sure hot work pushing all that cattle up into that high country. That water sure does look good, too. I can't order weight to wash off some of this grit. <laughs> Careful, little Joe. That's the closest you've come to taking a bath in months. Never mind who I am. Just get off my land. Your land? Now, what are you talking about, mister? You know what I'm talking about. You ain't deep, are you? Oh, no, we ain't deep, but are you sure you ain't got just a little bit too much sunshine, old timer? Uh, look, well, maybe you got a... kind of got your directions mixed up. <laughs> All right, now, don't anybody move. What do you want to go do a thing like that for, old timer? I know my rights. The law says that I can shoot trespassers on sight. <laughs> now, look, you're, you're on the Ponderosa. I bought this land, mister, and there ain't nobody going to take it away from me. Bought it. I don't want to kill anybody, but I will if you push me. Nobody's trying to push you, mister, but what makes you think this land is yours? I said I bought it. $25 hard money. I got the bill of sale to prove it. I hereby sell you all the land between the east shore of Lake Tahoe and Sun Mountain for $25 cash. <laughs> Signed, Henry T.P. Comstock. <laughs> <laughs> Henry Comstock. <laughs> Old timer. I guess you were just one of the many who were taken in by our dear friend, Mr. Comstock. I guess you didn't know him any too well, did you? I don't have to know him. I got the bill of sale there to prove it. The bill of sale? That old thief is selling the territory in Nevada if he could get away with it. <laughs> Looks like he did, too. You remember the first time we ever seen him, little Joe? <laughs> oh, that wild-eyed old mule of his? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That black stove pipe hat that made him look pious as a preacher. <laughs> You know how many men have draped this tree? 28 men and one woman. We figure to make it a nice round figure, like 30. All right, let's get it over with. Whoa, whoa! What the name of creation's your hurry? Mind if I have a last word with my friend? Friend? You haven't got a friend within 50 miles of Hangtown. Lord, I... I'm ready whenever you say the word, but Lord, I... I hope you'll forgive me if I... if I don't have time to tell these boys about the big new movement going on around here. What in thunder big movement you talking about? Changing the name of Hangtown to Placerville. You boys hear of any such goings on around here? Lord, looks like you left these boys up in the hills too long. You know the first law they passed was there'd be no more hangings within the city limits. City limits, how far are they? Clear to the top of the Sierra Nevada mountains. That's a good hundred miles. Mighty ambitious town, Placerville. Lord, you didn't tell these boys nothing. You didn't tell them there's mighty touchy people around here, too. Especially about any unnecessary hanging. Hanging you is about the most necessary thing a hard rock miner could ever do. So we'll escort you the hundred miles over the Sierra Nevada and hang you there. I thank you. Because, Mr. Henry T. P. Comstock, you're about the crookedest, slimiest, most double-dealing, weaseling, lying, thieving, no-good claim jumper that ever hit the state of California. to bring that thing down. <laughs> that isn't such a long time, little Joe. 
That one, it took 400 years for it to grow. 400 years? Well, that was even before Columbus sailed out of Spain to discover America. Us. There were trees that were living and growing in this forest. They were old when Christ pulled fish out of the Sea of Galilee. Don't cut unless you plant. That's right, Hoss. That's why we're here. Not just to take from the land, but to give. Yes, sir. see it a hundred years from now standing tall against the sky plant it Adam sure, well little ponderosa see you around in a couple of hundred years when you're a big ponderosa thousands of people who one day will come to this land we're mighty thankful for what we've done. There's timber up there to build whole new cities. Launch fleets of ships. Hear that, horse? Older brother Adam is planning to build that Yankee fleet of his again. Yeah, well, it's going to take a mite more water than we got here about to float it in, little Joe. Water? Oh, now, you don't think Adam is planning to sail his ships on just plain old water, do you? I guess you two mountain boys haven't heard. Just so happens I'm planning on ships that sail across sand. Mm. <laughs> I remember walking across about 600 miles of it the last time Paul sent me to Salt Lake City to file in claim papers. How would you like to be able to do it in under three days? Oh, come <laughs> on now. From here to Salt Lake City in three days? How are you going to do that? I think he's going to fly <laughs> through the air, or <laughs> Maybe two days. Oh, well, maybe one day. <laughs> you talking about a railroad, son? I'd be talking about a railroad, Pa. Dreams are mighty good things to have, son. You know what it takes to build a railroad? Track. Track that runs across sand, round mountains, and over rivers. And track ain't nothing but a lot of rail and a bed of ties to lay it on. You cut down all these wonderful trees to provide ties for a railroad? I'd cut them down, Pa. And I'd put new ones in their place. Yeah, that sounded like a rifle shot. On the California side, sounded to me like it come off the Ponderosa. Dorothy, if you don't move fast, you're going to be key witness to a hanging. So he thinks he can sneak away on that old mule. Yeah. How do you feel about four men chasing one man on a mule? Oh, well, maybe they have a reason for chasing him. I don't care for the odds. We sure could improve them, Paul. We sure could sweeten them up some at that, Paul. Yeah, we better stop them, too, before they stir up the Paiutes. The last time somebody stirred them up, three families of settlers paid for it with their lives. All right, boys, let's sweeten them. How far over you reckon them fellas are? About a half a mile, maybe. Yeah. It's just about what I figured. Hey, horse, even with that Sharps Buffalo gun you got, you don't figure you can hit a target at half-mile distance. You watch that fellas hat. That shot comes from the direction I thought it did. Ah. 
Boss, let me see that little old squirrel gun of yours for a minute. Sure, Adam. See that, Paul? Couldn't be Comstock. He didn't even have a rifle. And little Joe, what was all this talk about a half a mile? But you, you want to try it, little Joe? Yeah, I better. You uh, right sure now? Well, I think I better if I want to stay living with this family. That's a mighty fine old gun you got there, huh? Mighty good shooting. That's just the kind of thing any New Orleans boy learns to do by the time he learns to walk. Take a crack at it, Paul. Well, if I have to, just to show you young whippersnappers. Go ahead, you can't miss now. Give me that rifle. Mighty fine chief. We got to get out of here, Heck. They made men, they're devil. Where are they shooting from? That's what I want to know. I don't know where it's coming from, but it's the best darn shooting I ever saw. Good shooting, all right, but it's done by men like us, not devils. Thank you for looking favorably in the countenance of this miserable sinner, Lord. I sure do appreciate it. I sure do. And to prove it, I won't lie or steal or ever jump any other fellow's claim again as long as I live. Strike me dead if I do, Lord. You strike me dead. <laughs> Heck, I don't like this place. Feels haunted to me. Why don't we go back to California? Yeah, let's go that. back. We only came here to get rid of that Comstock fellow in the first place. Not get rid of him. Hang him. I promised myself to see that old thief hanged, and I mean to keep that promise. Well, I think we scared those fellows off. They're heading back to California. Yeah. Maybe they aren't. Uh, quite an exhibition of skill, my friends. Truly the best exhibition of the fine art of rifle shooting I've ever seen. Uh, since the days of that esteemed gentleman, Quincy P. Strongheart. Ah, uh, yes, I can see it all just as though it were yesterday. My boyhood chum, Quincy P., raised at my side in sight of the stormy and treacherous waters of Lake Nipishama. What in the tarnation are you talking about, mister? What'd you do to stir up all that excitement? It's probably one of them claim jumpers. They run out of California. Lad, I beseech you. Don't mention that evil place to me. I, Henry T.P. Comstock, who have roamed the four corners of the earth, have sailed every shore and coastline of the seven seas, never want to hear the name of that foul-sounding place again as long as I live. Why will you run out? I? You think I, Henry Comstock, was run out of California? Run out and told never to come back. How many claims did you jump? Did you hear that? Yeah, not you. <laughs> Lord, right where I stand, right where I stand, if I, Henry Comstock, ever jumped, or even thought of jumping any other gold miner's claim, strike me dead. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, Lord. I, I know I'm a miserable sinner, and certain things have been known to cling to my fingers, but I'm not ready yet, Lord, to meet the hellfires of retribution. Not yet, Lord. Not yet. Hellfires of retribution, hear that, little Joe? <laughs> well, I figure if a man's going to get religion, he might as well get it in a hurry. <laughs> Mr. Comstock, before your time is up, I think there's room for at least one good meal in there to help uh, see you through that final journey. Do my ears deceive me, or did I... did I hear you mention food? <laughs> uh, gentlemen, when do we eat? You too, Dorothy. <laughs> Dorothy, food, come. Gentlemen, I have feasted at the tables of kings and dined in the company of millionaires, but never, I repeat, never have I enjoyed such a meal as this. This is Hop Singh's doing, Mr. Comstock. In all of your traveling, did you ever meet a finer cook? 
My good man, worthy descendant of Confucius that you might be. I must compliment you on having acquired a skill in wizardry and the culinary arts unmatched in all this land. He no like the lip. <laughs> no, he likes some hop sing. Oh, very good. I bling more. Got plenty more. Yeah, you do that, hop sing. You do that. <laughs> Mr. Comstock, do you have any late news of my good friend, Captain John Sutter? Sir, so you're referring to Captain John Sutter of the Sacramento Valley? Are there any other Captain John Sutters? Huh. Well, the poor man, he's, he's a cause of sadness and melancholy to all of his friends. What's the matter? Is he getting worse? Not only getting worse, he's almost gone, as has his mind. Young man, pass that plate of sweet corn, please. You mean you're still hungry? I haven't seen corn as smooth and golden as this since I was a boy on the shores of Lake Semihushie. I thought you said over on the mountain, uh, Lake Nipishama. Nipishama one side, Semihushie on the other. Lots of lake in that neck of the woods. Yeah, well, just what neck of the woods was that? You, um, you boys familiar with foreign lands? Uh, no, no, we've never been out of the country. Why? Oh, it's a shame that you can't know too much about a wonderful country in my childhood, Canada. Oh, well, this, uh, Napachki and Scouchy Hiwachi, whatever you call it, are they in Canada? On the other side of the Frangatang Mountains. Mr. Comstock, what about my friend Captain Sutter? Poor man. It's a pity to what's happened to him. You wouldn't recognize him anymore. How bad is he, Mr. Comstock? Not just one more? Just a small one? Later. In fact, I think we've all had enough to eat for now. Hopsing? Yes, Mr. Cartwright. You like a dinner? Yes, dinner was very good, Hopsing. Very good. Very good, Hopsing, and I do thank you. We'll very good. Coffee. We'll have a coffee in here. Yes, Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Comstock? Brandy? Yes, don't mind if I do. Thank you, sir. You're very kind. Nice little place you got here. Reminds me of the time I was the guest of Queen Victoria at Buckingham Palace. <laughs> I'll ride on down to the sawmill, Paul. Have them bring those trees in we cut down. Fine, Adam, fine. Oh, Adam, uh, do you need any help? Well, come to think of it, we are a little shorthanded. Uh, how would you like to work for us, Mr. Comstock? We pay good money, dollar American a day. Work? What kind of work is that? Oh, hauling, cutting timber. Good, healthy outdoor work, from sun up to sundown. Sun up? Oh, I'm afraid that's not the kind of work I do. <laughs> Just what kind of work do you do, Mr. Comstock? I'd well, be real anxious to know. Yeah, uh, well, I'm a, I'm a merchant. Yes, that's what I am, a merchant. Oh, a merchant. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sometimes I buy, sometimes I sell. It all depends on the state of business, among other things. <laughs> Very good health, sir. <clears throat> Among other things, Mr. Comstock, do you ever indulge in something called panning for gold? You mean you folks don't cotton the folks who pan for gold? I told you I planted the first field of grain with John Sutter in the Valley of the Sacramento. Together we planted those hillsides with vines, with fruit-bearing trees. You know what they did to that land, those locusts, those ravagers who answered the cry of gold in California? They tore out those vines. They chopped down those trees. They trampled that wheat. Is it any wonder that John Sutter sits on his porch now, staring into the sun by the hour, recognizing no one, seeing nothing? You know about him, don't you? I know all about him. And that's why I came to the Ponderosa, my sons and I. And that's why I made my vow that never would these thousand square miles of God-made country be delivered into the hands of those spoilers, those destroyers? Mr. Comstock, if I so much as see a man digging for gold anywhere on my land, I'll shoot him at sight. Gold? You don't mean there's gold up here in Western Utah, do you? Well, that's what we keep telling those fellers over at Washaw Diggins, Mr. Comstock, that they're just wasting their time. There ain't enough gold over there to fool with. Hey, you think they'd listen to us? I don't know what there is about a gold miner. I think they must be three-fourths loco and the other fourth stupid. <laughs> you said they found gold? What I said was that they didn't hardly find enough to fool with. Yeah, they pan all day, come up with just about enough by themselves a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> now, if you were a whiskey merchant, Mr. Comstock, you should do rather well down at Washoe. Washoe? That's the name of the place, huh? Washoe. That's what they call it. 20 miles due east of the Ponderosa. 
Where are you going, Mr. Comstock? Dinner is fine, gentlemen. I hate to rush, but duty calls. Duty? What kind of duty? Well, there's miners at Washoe. They're just waiting to buy and sell. Farewell, gentlemen. <laughs> the fool. The gold-crazed fool. Oh. Hmm. Maybe I ought to follow him. Those fellows from California might still be after him, be trying to kill him. Well, probably for good cause, Huss. Anyway, I thought you worried about four-legged animals. Well, I, I reckon he's sort of like a four-legged animal himself. You might say like a jackass. <laughs> hey, hey, can I go too, Pa? Every Saturday night there's a dance on a Dutch piece at the diggings. A dance? Or do they have any women to dance with? Yeah, they got two or three. They're pretty big. So some gals that do the miners' washing. You ought to see them, Pa. They're big and raw bones as Texas steers, but they can dance. <laughs> well, Western Utah's grown up. All right, uh, Hoss, you go after our friend the fool and. Uh, Little Joe, and you uh, go off to Dutch Pete's to your dance. Adam, what about you? What do you want? Hey, come on with us, Adam. No, I don't want anything, Pa. I got work to do. But, uh, Little Joe, I might just drop by and take a look at one of those uh, big, raw bone women. Hey, why don't you do that, Adam? As a matter of fact, I'll save one for you. The biggest and rawest of the bunch. Yes, I bet you will. <laughs> Boy, I sure would like to surprise him with a pretty little gal. There ain't no pretty gals in a hundred miles here, Little Joe. Hey, but I'm just thinking about one. Just one. Oh, you sure his ma wasn't part jackrabbit? Huss. His ma was all woman. So was Adam's. So was yours. They left me sons, boy. They left me sons. Beggar man thief. Which one do you think he is, Hoss? I reckon he's most likely been nearly all of them at one time or another, little Joe. Still think those fellas from California might be after him? I don't know. But if they are, he's gonna need some mighty fast help. Yeah, maybe so. But I got a real strange feeling that old crowbait can take care of just about anything that comes along. Hardy. I guess the good Lord watches over fools and little children. Well, just in case the good Lord forgets for a minute, I think I better trail along after him and keep an eye on you for trouble. I'll see you at the diggings tonight. You be sure and save me some of that tarantula juice, you hear? Now, when I get to the diggings, I ain't gonna have time for any tarantula juice. You stay out of that pout country. You remember what Paul said about stirring him up? Horse. What the heck would I want with any old Paiute?
Thomas, dog. Did you hurt yourself? Nothing happened, my boy. Nothing at all. We count stocks are made of steel. <clears throat> yes, I can remember my grandpappy, the ripe age of 93. Shoot iron bars and spitting out nails. Yeah, I, I reckon you're all right at that. <laughs> well, the way you fell back there, I could have sworn you broke something. Son, you're looking at a man who did break something. He's linked with a past. How long has all this been going on? Well, feller's been fooling around these mountains for years. Digging up one side and then down the other. Fighting that blue stuff over there, they call it. Blue stuff? Never heard of it. What's that? Well, I don't reckon anybody rightly knows. Except it gums up something fierce. Makes it hard to get at the gold. Gold. Yeah, the gold. Like the sound of that word, son. It's like music to my ears. Yes, sir. From now on, I intend to confine all my valuable time to the Comstock load. The Comstock load? What's that? Everything that meets the eye, son. Everything that meets the eye. You just got here. How can you even think about naming all this after yourself when you only just got here? Son, that just goes to show you how wrong a man can be. Because I got the feeling that I've been here practically all of my life. Greetings, gentlemen. Henry T.P. Comstock brings you greetings and salutations. Did, uh, did you gentlemen file a legal claim for this particular piece of land? Legal claim? Now, what kind of a question is that? Uh, that's simple enough question, friend. You didn't file a claim, you're trespassing to my property. I'm requesting you to move on. Oh, Mr. Comstock, you can't do a thing like that. You only just got here. Son, the law's the law. The law says if a man don't file a claim, he ain't got any more right than a tinker. Now, you wait a minute. You just wait a minute. We filed a claim more than a month ago. Up at Dutch Pete's, we did it. Dutch Pete's? Sounds like a purveyor of the old evil eye. Now, if you file this claim, it'll legal like courthouse. Dutch Pete's legal like courthouse is good enough for us, mister. And give me back that pan. Work and shake all day. You got to be chauffeured with this damn Is this a private conversation, friend, or could you use a little company? Where'd you come from? I'll ask the questions, friend. How big a claim you got here? Uh, clear to the head of the mountain. And all of it ain't words. I... Don't say it. Think it, but don't say it. Quite a good-sized claim. How much gold? Gold? Say gold? I tell you, mister, there ain't nothing around here but this dang blue stuff. Loud. How'd you like to have yourself a partner? Partner? In what? Your claim, friend. <laughs> Clear to the top of the mountain. Anyone will do, I'll give you... I'll give you 20... Uh, $17 American. $17? What, but I tell you, mister, all this dang blue stuff ain't worth a nickel. Seventeen dollars, my good man. It's my final offer. Well, I'll take it, Mister. <laughs> mister, huh? you just bought yourself into half of this claim. Seventeen dollars, huh? Eh? Uh, wait till I tell this to the boys at Dutch Pete's tonight. <laughs> Partner, there's something else you're going to do at Dutch Pete's tonight too. Now, it's properly arranged time. I want you to break. You, you follow me, friend? <laughs> 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 You brave man, you ride into Paiute village alone. Uh, Chief Winnemuck, I believe you know my father, Ben Cartwright. I know, Father. I think you know me, too, and my brothers, Horace and Adam. Matter of fact, Chief, didn't you, uh, didn't you trade Pa this pinto pony for a buffalo gun? You're from high up on mountain. Why you come here? Well, I brought you a little present, Chief. Pretty nice color, wouldn't you say? You bring this for me? Hey, well, not exactly. It's for your daughter. When you see Saratucci? Hey, it was just a little while back down at the river. She's taking a bath. You now, hold it, Chief. She's more than a mile away. Just one of many women. A knife. Oh, 
other women here. Much big, plenty fat. Yeah, well, I wouldn't know, Chief. Uh, I didn't look at the other women. And what about this material? Got it from a peddler across the mountains from Sacramento. Said it was genuine silk. Not very strong, not much good. Yeah, well, Chief, it's for a dress, not a horse blanket. Hmm. Saratucci! Look like a real princess, ma'am. What do you think, Chief? Hmm. Sure, fine tasting meat, Chief. What is it? A rattlesnake. It's real, very good. We have a lot. You eat more. Well, no thanks, Chief. I'm not a very big eater. Hmm. How about showing me that Appaloosie horse you were trying to sell me? I bring a horse. You eat more. Very good. Well, sure, Chief. Oh, please, no, thank you, ma'am. I'm not a very big eater. Hey, uh, you know how to make this into a dress? Into a dress? Yeah, no. See, you know, see what I mean here? You now, uh, yeah, well, look, now, it doesn't look too good on me. Look, you try it. Sort of, uh, hey, you do it. That's it. That's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you getting the idea, Princess? Yeah, that looks nice. And hey, now, listen, there's a, there's a dance down at the Washaw Diggins. A dance? You don't know dance. A, a dance. Dance, da, da, dance, dance. Hey, you know, you like to dance? Yeah, well, good, so do I. Now, listen, don't tell Chiefy, all right? Hey, good, because he'd scalp me if he knew what I had in mind. Now, you meet me where the river meets the meadow, just beyond the waterfall. And then, Princess, you and I are going to have ourselves a dance. That's what I call a horse. That's what I call a real hunk of woman. Hey, I'm going to do wrong with the party. Innkeeper, bring me one of those. <clears throat> Never mind. <laughs> Young fella, I come from Virginia. Which, as you can no doubt here, is a pretty well-known fact hereabouts. You drunken coach! You don't even know where Virginia is! <laughs> <laughs> the old dominion, sir. The fairest of all the 35 states. Land where I was born, sir. Born and bred. And been soaking up to your teeth in corn liquor ever since. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're from Virginia. That's the old wonderful. dominion, sir, the fairest You wouldn't I... say that, friend. You ever seen the sun set on Lake Tomahawker? Oh, that's a pretty... Like, where'd you get the girl, son? The girl? Hey, she's a real looker. Oh, well, Princess <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> Gentlemen. Princess. Gentlemen and ladies. I'd, I'd like to present to you the Princess Sarah Tucci. Princess Sarah for short. Daughter of Chief Winnemucca by our friendly neighbors, the Paiutes. Oh, sir? 
Do I understand you to mean you were reckless enough to take this Paiute gal away from her kinfolk and bring her here? <laughs> Excuse me, I just remembered I ordered a drink. Paiute's a silly young fool. Innkeeper, give me a... a... No, no, never mind. <laughs> Remember what Paul said about him stirring up them Paiutes? Well, little brother, what you mean about stirring up the Paiutes? And what I mean about stirring up the Paiutes is two entirely different stirring ups. Princess, may I have the next dance? Pardon me, ma'am. Bye, everybody. Grab your partner. We're going to do the Virginia Reel. Do you want to be a little dough? Fat what and use a skunk. Hey, he comes touch right. See the look here, boy. <laughs> because I, I prefer the boy doing the tuna and brother in the beef. <laughs> Dance? Dance? Yeah. No oh, dance, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, Hoss, I hurt my leg in the war of Lake Montebago. Well, how about one with me? Yeah. Oh, with you? Oh, well, that's different. Excuse us. <laughs> Anytime you want to switch partners. Princess, you sure are beautiful. No, you really are. I don't know if this has ever happened before, man, but you're so darn pretty. You take Saratucci away. Well, I didn't exactly take her away, Chief. I, uh, I just asked her to go to a dance with me. What you do? You call this dance? I, I guess I did get a little carried away, Chief, but uh, she's a mighty pretty girl. She Paiute girl. She marry him. Lean knife. Ah, congratulations, friend. Haven't been to a wedding for a long time. <laughs> you know, I had an uncle once, Uncle Jonah. Not the one that got himself swallowed by the whale. No, sir, he's a different fellow entirely. He's my mother's brother. One that never did a day's lick of work in his life. Did manage to get himself married, though, seven different times. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Comstock. Yeah? I think you've done enough talking for one night. Well, I ain't had a chance to kiss the bride yet. <laughs> <laughs> My son seek no trouble with the Paiutes, Chief Winamaka. That one is young, foolish. He will be punished if he's done anything wrong. But he will be punished by me, not by anyone else. He is your son. Yes, Chief. And she is your daughter. Take her home. You know, the thing I like about you younger brothers, you don't care how big a mess you get yourself into as long as someone else gets you out of it. Yeah, well, you know something, older brother? I just knew you'd be here in time. Just in time to march you back home. I'll get you. Now, wait a minute, Paul. We can't go yet. Adam here ain't even had a dance. Now, where'd that old big fat gal go to? 
Why, you horse-faced, spindle-legged old sidewinder, I said, I was the one buying the lady a drink. Make someone a bath, friend? I'll arrange to have you talk at me. Innkeeper, pour this young lady a shot. Don't you touch that, ma'am. That stuff will poison you. Bartender, pour the little lady a drink of your best whiskey, the kind that we drink down in Virginia. My dear young lady, I've traveled the four corners of the earth, sailed the seven seas. I'm here to tell you the swell they drink in Virginia will ride a skunk's gut. Ma'am, <coughs> what I like about you, you sure drink whiskey like a lady. Adam, I know she's a little bit on the heavy side, but every bit of her show can dance. Fiddler, this is Saturday night. Let's have a little music. <laughs> A ledge 50 foot wide, a solid ledge of gold. Raise your bonanza! Where, Pike? Where? Where? Pike, we're your friends and we tell you where it is. <laughs> Up Six Mile Canyon, head of the mile, and you're dead. Let's go! Where are you, please? <laughs> On your mind. Just this. I hate to break your hearts, but all that gold out there, all that big strike, that's all of my land. Every bit of it's on my land. Your oh, land? Yeah. When did you stake a claim to it? This afternoon, friend. Ask my partner there, Mr. Pike. We're gonna call it the Comstock Lou. Is that true, Pike? You sell this old horse thief part of your claim? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Show you what kind of a guy Henry T.P. Comstock is. I'm going to cut each and every one of you in on a fabulous Comstock load for $100 a piece American. Cash on the barrel head. <laughs> it's all right, friend. It's all right. But it's gold. I really found gold. Your friend, we'll talk about it later. It's gold, can't you see? It's gold. Hey, this is gold. It's really gold. It's the richest I've ever seen in here. I just given it away. I didn't know. I, I didn't know. Now you hear? Now you get out of the way. Hey, man, I'll show you where the richest part is. Let's Let's go. Go. Don't forget the best friend and partner you ever had. Yeah. Yeah. Let me pack, wait for you. Yeah, I'll wait for all the guinea. Oh. Oh. Just so it won't be a total loss. I hereby baptize this place, Virginia! Yeah! That's not the way to do it, boy. Oh, shut up, you oh, are. No, no, this is going to be a great place someday. Fortunes will be made here. Yeah! We'll make fortunes so great, we're going to need help counting the money. Yeah! So it ought to have a fitting name. Shouldn't just call it Virginia. We ought to call it, uh, Virginia City. Yeah! Look who just showed up. Did you hear him? They found gold. Yeah, I hear him. Those are guys after Mr. Comstock. They're not even thinking of Henry Comstock now. They're thinking of only one thing, gold. <laughs> Thank you. 
gold will do to men. You don't even feel like going with them. So do I, little Joe. It's funny what gold do to a man, ain't it? So what it did to John Sutter's dream in the Valley of Sacramento. Let's go home. Well, there you have it. The story of Henry T.P. Comstock. <laughs> he sure fooled everybody here, didn't he? Yeah, he did. But I guess most of all he fooled himself. That clay we jumped. You know, they've taken millions of dollars worth of pure silver out of there. And would you believe it? Old Henry sold that claim for, what, $11,000. <laughs> Hearing that, I don't feel so bad about that worthless piece of paper there. Worthless? Well, I, uh... I wouldn't say it's exactly worthless. So you paid uh, $25 hard money for it. What do you say, boys? Don't you think it'd be worth $25 to have a memento of our dear departed friend? You know about that old crow bait still jumping claims? <laughs> <laughs> Here you are, old timer. $25 and a little more. Well, thank you kindly. <laughs> Let's go, boys. Take it easy, old timer. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you, old timer. Yeah. You completely ignored a no trespassing sign, mister. This is the Ponderosa. You think he was spotting cattle for rustlers at him? No. No, that's not true. Look, look, my, my name is Derwood Watkins. I am the agent for Miss Ada Isaacs Menken's Company of Players. We, we open tonight in Virginia City. Tickets. Look, look. Here, tickets. The best in the house. Please be my guest. Ain't it funny how a man will lie right up till the time you... Stretch his neck. No, no, no. I don't know, Hoss. You think that uh, limb's strong enough to hold him? Yeah, I think so. He looks to me like he's most now all blubber in him. Yeah, I think it'll do all right, as long as you don't flop around too much. Well, this is barbaric. Well, I demand a trial. Hey! hey! Come back! Come back! Hey! <laughs> That's enough, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> well, I bet he remembers the next time he sees a no trespass sign. Hey, <laughs> look at this. Hey. Now, Hoss, you get rid of that thing for Pa Caesar. Ain't that something? 
You heard what I said, Horst. What are you doing? Oh, well, nothing. I, uh, I'm just getting this rope, Adam. It's, it's, it's an awful good rope. All right, boys, let's go. We got work waiting. You didn't have to take half the night. Come on. You're lucky. You live all the way down to the other end of the house. Sometimes Adam can be worse than Paul. Hey, Paul didn't see you, did he? No, he ain't even home yet. Here, help me into this dean blasted thing. All right. Now, come you ain't got no button on this shirt. No, I just ain't got one, that's all. Mm -hmm. Little Joe, if Paul catches us at a show like this, he'll skin us alive. You don't bring anybody who'll recognize us, do you? Well, I got your brand new suit on, don't you? Yeah. Hey, you got your hair slicked down real nice. Yeah. Got your boots polished? Yep. Who's gonna recognize you? Yeah. Hey. Anybody else here want to bet my friend can't bend his horseshoe? Well, let me try. You try it, buddy. Go on. <laughs> Who else wants to drive? Go ahead, friend. Yeah. <laughs> hey, how about a little wager, huh? I've got it. All right, here, you try it, buddy. Want to try it? Go ahead. <laughs> how about you, friend? You want to give it a try? Okay. Come on, Sledge. Here, show them how it's done. Come on. You just stay right there, honey. <laughs> I told you could do it. Come on, Sledge. <laughs> How about that, friend, huh? Do you know who I am? No, sir, don't think that I do. I'm John C. Regan. That's right, former heavyweight champion of the world. Have a drink on the house and be on your way, Regan. I tell you what, I'll lick the best man in the house for all the liquor I can drink. Well? Outside, Regan. You wouldn't shoot an unarmed man. John C. Regan, is it? Former champion. Well, you never was champion, Regan. Your manager had to stop the fight to keep you from getting killed. What are you talking about? Nobody ever stopped one of my fights. Well, you've been flattened by every tramp pug in the business. Well, I'd lick you myself if... Well, if I was still in one piece. You do your fight with your mouth, mister. You got a friend that can do it with his fists? I'm buying Mr. Regan all he can drink. Just as soon as my partner here gets finished with him. Sledge, this fellow says you're a dumb mud walloper. You ain't got no more sense than a suck egg mule. Now, is that right? He says you're too stupid to even know how to fight. Now, is that right? Honey, I'll be right back. Don't Get back, girl. Why don't you sit down, Sledge? Leave him alone. Why don't you take a little walk, huh? Sledge, don't know no rules, Regan. Get him, Sledge! Hey, it's time I go 
a good ruckus in here. Hey, listen, you want to go to the show or do you want to fight? Well, I hate to miss a good fight, but I hate to miss that show, too. Well, then come on. Stop it. Stop it, Regan. Sledge. Sledge, are you all right? You didn't have to go that far, Regan. Sledge. Sledge, you all right? Somebody get a doctor. Quick. But this is gonna be good. I'm sure you got them tickets. Sure, I got them right here, don't worry. Adam. Yeah, what, what are you doing here, Adam? I'm waiting for you two. Oh. Adam, Adam, uh, we, we can explain everything. Yeah, well, you're gonna have a lot of explaining to do if the best seats are gone. Come on, let's go inside. Yeah, well, let's go. <laughs> Dear Olinska, ere yet the envious daylight robs my soul of the sweet privilege of drinking from thine eyes deep draughts of the bright liquid fire, which as from the twin stars of love stream through my enraptured heart. Appear, dear life. <laughs> Appear, dear life. <laughs> Appear. Casimir, thou here. Oh, hence, hence, wert thou discovered. Think for how fearfully my father's wrath would fall on the clandestine suitor to his child. What can Casimir dread, ennobled and emboldened by thy love? <laughs> A thousand tyrant fathers I would brave from all their wrath, my love at Alenska, save or earn an early but an honored grave. You tell him, Casimir. You bring on the old man. I'll stop. <laughs> but see, the dawn advances. The moon is sunk beyond the hoary hill. The glimmering lights are one by one extinguished. And the hum of busy menial speaks approaching day. Away, my love, away! Oh, nothing like this girl here on the poster. Yeah, well, let's see, this is kind of mixed up. See, the girl that's on this poster is playing a man in the show. Yeah. How come she wants to do that? Well, I don't know. It's just the way they do it. Is my will obeyed and the wild horse secured? All is as my lord commanded. Good. Bring forth the miscreant. I knew it. I knew he was going to catch up with him. What, her? What? Oh, yeah. shut up. Oh, my father, pardon for him. Unworthy girl. All of the powers of this earth were ineffectual to assuage my vengeance. Ah, bring forth the untamed steed. Hey, what are they going to do to her, little Joe? What are they going to do? I don't know. Now bind the treasure to him, and let scorching sun, wintry blasts, devouring hunger, and parching thirst rend the traitor! Dearest Father, my mercy save him! Lead not for me, dear Alenska. Perish as I might, 
It is sufficient glory that I die for thee. Now bind the traitor to him. Hey. He sure was a girl, wasn't he? He sure was. Boy, I sure thought she was a goner when they put her on that horse. So. Uh, I could have told you not to worry. They never kill off the hero. Well, I'll tell you this. It'd be a big mistake to kill off anything like that, I guess. Yeah, I'm with you, Walter. Hey, little Joe. Hmm? Listen. Was she or wasn't she? Was she or wasn't she what? Well, you know. No, I don't know. Ask Adam. Adam, was she or wasn't she? Well, she wasn't she what? Naked. Well, now, you, uh, you got eyes, you saw her. Yeah, but exactly what did we see, really? <laughs> she was wearing tights. Besides, what difference does it make? What difference does it make? Ladies and gentlemen, the highlight of the evening. One of you lucky gentlemen will take home the garter Worn by Miss Ada Isaacs Mankin. It's Paul. Here you are, boys. And may the best man win. What's the matter, Ed? Nothing, Ben. Just get me out of here. Well, I'm sorry, boys. There'll be other times. <laughs> now, how about a beer, please? Coming right up. I hope the next time you... <laughs> Down there, Ada. Nothing, Ben. Ben, don't look so severe. Suddenly I felt tired, that's all. You're sure? Positive. You don't mind if an old friend worries about you a little? Please don't ever stop. Pheasant, lobster, my favorite champagne. You remembered. I had it chipped in from a Boston importer when I heard you were coming. It isn't often that I have a chance to entertain such a beautiful lady. You're lonely, Ben. Oh, uh, I have the Ponderosa. And my boys. They keep me pretty well occupied. And uh, every once in a while, a dear friend passes through. To the incomparable Ada Menken, more beautiful than I ever remembered. Happiness. Oh. 
All right. Out with it. What's wrong? It has something to do with Regan, doesn't it? I'm a good listener, Ada. Ben, you know most of the story. Well, when Regan returned from England, he was broke and finished as a fighter. Even his manager deserted him. Somehow he found me in St. Louis. I, I gave him money, all I had and what I could borrow. He promised he'd never bother me again. You saw him tonight in the saloon, didn't you? Yes. He's worthless, Ada. He's never drawn a sober breath. Please, Ben. I'm sorry, Ada, but when I think of the way the man has treated you, the way he's beaten you... I don't want to talk about it. What are you going to do? See Mr. Regan out of town, make sure he never bothers you again. No, Ben. Don't interfere. I can handle him. Can you? Please, keep out of this, Ben. I won't make any promises, Ada. I'm sorry. We'll celebrate our reunion some other time. Good night. Ben. I'm sorry. I know how you must have looked forward to this evening. Forgive me. There's nothing to forgive. Good night. Good night, Ben. How did you get in here? That rube that just left, could he make you feel like that? Get out of here before I call the manager. Now, that'd only lead to trouble. You don't want any more trouble, do you, Ada? Who is he? Ben Cartwright, an old friend. It won't work again, John. Ben's an old friend, nothing more. Well, seeing you two at the door, I got a different impression. If you have any idea of blackmailing Ben or getting any more money out of me, forget it. Ben, it'd kill you first. And I'm broke, John. That's why I revived the Mazeppa. Well, I understand you're on top, Ada. Or you should never have retired from the stage and denied your public. <laughs> oh, I saw the way those miners were looking at you tonight. You filth. Now, you look here, Ada. I won't be bought off this time. You're never going to get rid of me again. Get out of here. Well, when you change your mind, I won't be far away. Brought your horse over from the livery stable, just like you asked, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, thank you, Billy. Uh, well, take him back to the stable, let him down for the night. I've decided to stay on in Virginia City. Watch it, Anna. I've been thinking about Pa and that woman. Well, what about Pa and that woman? I, I don't like it none. Pa ain't got no experience with them actresses. Leastwise, none he ever talked about. Well, I guess he can handle it. I thought I told you to bring Pa along. Pa didn't come home last night. Just now, Hop Singh sent his clothes into town. What for? He's moved into the international house. Where that woman's staying? Yeah, and that ain't all. Last night, they had champagne in her rooms. And tonight, Hop Singh says Pa's having her over the house for supper. What'd I tell you, Adam? What do you make of it, Adam? Well, she sure works fast. Guess we better have a little talk with our Pa. Oh, it's a man-sized spread, the Ponderosa. 
over a thousand square miles of the finest timber and grazing land west of Salt Lake. At last count, we had more than 10,000 head of cattle grazing in the lowlands. It's an empire, Ben. And do you think it all belongs to you? And the boys. They're very fine boys. You should be very proud. Oh, they'll do. I envy you, Cartwrights. It must be wonderful living so close to the land. Well, we have our problems. Protecting what's ours from outsiders. You do that very well, I imagine. Yes, ma'am. It's a delicious supper, Hop Singh. Really superb. Oh, you lady got sense. Hop Singh all the time. Break back, cook, fancy grub. Nobody appreciate. You come supper all the time. Well, that makes it official, Ada. You're part of the family now. Oh, I better get you to the theater. Hop Singh, bring the character around to the front, please. No eat dessert. Hop Singh fix special. Well, Miss Macon has a performance to give tonight. Now, come on, get the character around. Rush, rush, all the time rush around, lick at the split. <laughs> He's delightful. <laughs> he needs a woman's discipline. We all do, eh, boys? Good night, Adam. Little Joe, horse. We'll be seeing each other again soon, I hope. Goodbye, Miss Macon. Hey, Paul. Yes? Oh, Paul, we... We want to talk to you, Paul, private-like. Oh. Can't it keep? Uh, no, Pop. I'll wait for you in the carriage, Ben. Well, what is it? Out with it. Paul, promise you ain't gonna get mad now. Well, what's on your mind? Speak up. Well, it's, uh... Well, it's, it's about what's been happening to you, Paul. Yeah, Paul, we know you're still a young man, and, well, you must get lonely sometimes, and I, well, I know you're sick and tired of having us around, and, but, well, we... You know what your brothers are trying to say, Hoss? Now, Paul, you promise not to get mad. Must be got plain. Well, Paul, she's an actress. I see. So that's what's been troubling you three all evening. You don't think Miss Mencken is good enough for your father? Well, let me tell you something. Ada Mencken is all the woman that a man could want. And I'm very proud to be seen in a company. Yeah, but Pa, she's... Now don't say it, Adam. Now don't you boys think that I'm old enough to take care of myself? Paul, we... We's just doing it for your own good. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And now, with your permission, I'll accompany Miss Mencken back to town. Ada, I told him not to go in, but he went right in anyway. I... Find Ben Cartwright. Tell him not to wait. That you'll escort me back to the hotel. But, Miss Ada, Never I... mind. Just find him and tell him. Yes, ma'am. Adam, I didn't know you were coming to tonight's performance. I didn't come to see the performance. I think you know why I'm here. Yes, I think I do. Don't you think your father is a wise enough man to take care of himself? Look, Ada, you have your way of life. We have ours. You also speak for your brothers? In this case, yes. Tell me, Adam, when did you first decide I was a bad woman? When you saw me with your father, or, or when you saw me on the stage? 
What are you afraid of, Adam? What makes you think I'm afraid? You came here to say something to me. Why don't you say it? I don't think words are necessary. You know what I mean. Well, now at least we understand each other. Adam, what happened? What'd she say? None of your business. Hey, what's eating him? Well, I guess older brother didn't make out so well. What are we gonna do, little Joe? We, we gotta help Paul. Yeah, well, you know, it takes a red-blooded man to persuade a woman. Yeah, but where are we gonna get one? Hey, where are you going? To get a shave and some clean clothes. There's just no way to meet a lady. See you, Hoss. Who is it? Room service. Well, you must be mistaken. I didn't order anything. Compliments of Mr. Cartwright. How sweet of Mr. Cartwright. To a lovely lady clothed in the light of her own beauty. Joe Cartwright. Joe Cartwright? At your service, Miss Mankin. Little Joe. Just Joe, ma'am. You Cartwrights have a flair for the unexpected. I think when you get to know this Cartwright a little bit better, ma'am, you won't be surprised at anything. Oh. Anna, you take, uh, you take my brother Adam. Now, he's a dependable one. He's a warrior. And then there's Hoss. My horse is just plain Hoss. And what about your father? A pa? A pa never changes. He's, he's the same year in and year out. You've got everyone pretty much figured out, haven't you? I guess Pa's had his day, but... Of course, that was when he was much younger. And now you think he should be retired into the background. Is that it? We don't have to talk about him, do we? No, we don't. Why don't you pour the champagne? Yes, ma'am. You're a very handsome man, Joe. Oh, I don't know. Do you have many girls? Yeah, quite a few. Are they wild about you? Yeah, some of them are. <laughs> They're fools. Letting you out of their sight. <clears throat> yeah. Here, let me fill your glass. Well, there's plenty of time. We've got the whole evening ahead of us. Hey, how would you like me to get you something to eat? At a I, time I... like this. <laughs> You're wonderful, Joe. You make a woman feel at ease. Yet wanted. I'm glad you came. Hey, boy, you know, it's really, it's getting hot in here now. It's perfect. Hey, Miss, Miss, Miss Megan. Ada. Yeah, Ada. Ada, look, I don't want you to get the wrong idea about why, why I oh, came here. Oh, I haven't got the wrong idea. I know exactly why you're here. And I won't disappoint you. You get everything you deserve. Hey, what was that for? Teach you a lesson you obviously needed. And I was making, I can explain. I ought to have you horsewhipped coming in here with the ideas you had. Listen, I only did it for Paul to show him what kind of a... What kind of a woman I am? Yes, ma'am. I, no, I mean, no, ma'am. I... Let me tell you, little Joe. Your father moved into this hotel to protect me from someone out of my past. And for no other reason. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am. I, I didn't know that. 
This is something between my pa and you, and uh, I'm sorry I made a fool out of myself. You cut rights are quite a family. Is that Pa? He usually checks to see if I'm all right. You better go. No, through here. Hey, what, what, what about the champagne, the flowers? Well, don't worry. I won't tell him you were here. No, I wasn't thinking about myself. You're sweet. Hurry. Oh, Just a minute, Ben. All right, where is he? Well, where'd the Cartwright kid go? I know he's here. You're drunk. Well, you always did know, didn't you, Ada? Look at yourself, brawling in saloons and in back alleys. All right, don't change the subject. Where did the kid go? He isn't here. Why do you do it, John? Why do you act this way? You could still be champion of the world if you wanted to be. Oh, it's all in the past, so forget it. I can't forget it. I remember what you were like, what, how things used to be between us. Now I have to listen to them say you're all washed up. Oh, I can still handle myself. You ought to see the respect in their faces when I finish beating up one of these rubes. You're still the big man, aren't you? Well, I'm all the man you'll ever have. Now, where did the kid go? John, I don't have much left, a few jewels. I'll give them to you if you promise you'll leave town without causing any trouble. Take them. You know, I, uh, I was never able to court you with champagne, Ada. But then I didn't have three sons to do my lovemaking for me, either. Get out of here. Must make you feel like a queen, Ada. Ben Cartwright proposed to you yet? He hasn't any intentions of marrying me. That's not quite true, Ada. Make a move, Regan. So I can kill you. Well, I'm not armed, Cartwright. Don't interfere, Ben. I'm asking you to be my wife, Ada. That gives me every right to interfere. Now, Regan, you be on that morning stage to Salt Lake. Or get yourself a gun. Now get out. I will settle this card right. My way. Well, you won't shoot an unarmed man. I'll give you the same chance you give that miner. It was a fair fight. Ask his partner. Ask anybody in the bar. Get out. Move. I hope you know what you're doing, Cartwright. Little Joe, how'd you make it? Now don't say anything else about Ada Mankin. Little Joe, I, I ain't even open my mouth. Yeah, well, just don't. Go on, finish your beer. I'll see you outside. That's right. My name is Regan. John C. Regan. Remember that when your pa asks. Sure. Cartwrights, aren't you? Yes, sir. Uh, most people just call me horse. I, I don't think I've had the pleasure. I drink for the house on John C. Regan. Yes, sir. Hey! Hey! Well, I've 
I've known you a long time, Ada. You know, I've... I thought of you often. Read about you. Wondered what had happened to you. And seeing you here... Ben, you're a lonely man. Maybe you're mistaking loneliness for love. What about you? Now, how long will you be content to go on running away from yourself, from Regan? What do you think your sons would say if you married the notorious Ada Menken? My sons? What do my sons have to do with it? You're a very close family, Ben. I wouldn't want to change that. Well, my boys need a woman around the house as much as I do. Boys? They're not boys, Ben. They're grown men. Maybe little Joe or Haas would accept me, but... But Adam... Well, Adam is hard-headed, but he's my son. Yes, I know. What do you mean? He came to visit me backstage. <laughs> he's very much your son. Adam. You're a very desirable woman, Ada. Thank you, Ben. You're a wonderful man. But I'd rather settle for half a life than, than come between you and your sons. Half a life? That's all you've ever had. Maybe that's all I understand. Maybe it's best I'm leaving tonight for San Francisco. I wish I'd been able to ask you before those little boys became men. I'll be checking out shortly. Would you prepare my bill, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Cartwright. Paul! Paul! Somebody mind here beat little Joe to death. Lay down at the settee. How is he? That gash over his optic nerve. The brother may be blinded at him. Anybody know who did it? Little Joe couldn't say. He's coming too. Huh? Easy, son. Now don't try to move. Can you see me? Huh? Don't try to talk. Everything's going to be all right. If you can see me, blink your eyes. Huh? Easy, son. If you can see me, blink your eyes two times. out in 37 fights. He still would be champion if he hadn't been robbed. Dirty, thieving, crooked referee. Give me a gun, Adam. Do as I say.
Reach for it, Regan. Reach for it. Uh, with this busted up hand, well, I couldn't find a tricker, Cartwright. Now, if you want to settle for what I did to your boy, you're going to have to shoot me. Or do it with your fists. Paul, let me do it. Keep out of this horse. Paul, you gotta let me do it. Little Joe and me, Paul's. You just gotta let me do it. You just stand aside, horse. Let go of me! I know gouging a fighting man and no kicking at a fellow when he's down. I ain't whipped yet, Paul. Don't try to fight him, wrestle him. Understand. How can she? She's a woman in love. A man like that? Uh, it's hard to figure, isn't it? She could have any man she wants. As I think you found out. Beats me. A woman as beautiful as that in love with her. There are many kinds of love, Hoss. As many kinds as there are women. Let's go see little Joe.
the tools are closed! I don't understand. Just one tree. What tree is all it'll take? If I know Luther Bishop and Ben Cartwright, by sundown there'll be more thunder on this mountain than you've ever seen. We better go. Somebody's cutting timber up on the strip. Come on out of there. Now look, I'm gonna count to three. You don't come out, I'm gonna start shooting. One, two. Don't shoot. Please. I didn't do anything wrong. Are you were trespassing. Trespassing? You must be a cartwright. Yes, ma'am. I thought so. One of those high and mighty Cartwrights who thinks he owns all the land in Nevada. Oh, we don't own all the land, ma'am. Just a good piece of it. Including that piece you're standing on right now. This land belongs to my pa. You mean Luther Bishop? That's right. Hey, you must be Amy. Hey, you've grown up some. Now, if you don't mind getting on out of here, I'd like to put my dress on. If that's worrying you, ma'am, I won't look. Just a little old frog. You better put your dress on. All right. You can turn around. Here, let me help you. I'm sorry if I scared you before. I didn't mean to. There you are. I guess I'd better be going. Yeah, me too. I, I have a lot of calves I'm supposed to bring in before dark. I was going to wonder what happened to me. Do you come here very often? Most every day. About this time? I'll see you then. Are you the one they call Little Joe? Yeah, I'm the one. What kept you? I was worried you followed that fellow onto the concho. I lost him down at the creek. Who do you think they were, Paul? Oh, I don't know. Bishop's men, probably. Now, you know what would happen if Luther Bishop found a cartwright riding around on the concho. Yeah, Paul, I know. Well, bear it in mind, boy. Adam, catch up with Trump. Tell him I want to see him at the house. All right, let's go. Now, from now on, I want men posted 24 hours a day. Trump, I want to know. The moment any man sets foot on that trucky strip, I want to know. I get you, Mr. Cartwright. I just don't understand. I... Well. Luther Bishop wants to start fighting for that 
stupid piece of land all over again. I used to think it was a pretty good judge of character. That court order ruled it was our land. I'd, I'd have staked my life that Luther Bishop would at least respect the law. For one tree. You're going to start fighting all over again for one tree. This has nothing to do with a tree. If you stand by and you watch a man take something that isn't his, now whether it belongs to you or anybody, and you do nothing to stop him, well, pretty soon that man will be taking something else and something else and something else. Trump, you get those men together and keep an eye open. I won't let you down, Mr. Cartwright. I know you won't. Oh, I, I just don't understand. Papa, is it worth it? Is the land really worth all this fighting? You think it's worth it to Trump to carry that scar for the rest of his life? A man works for wages on the place. He's obliged to defend it. It's part of his job. That's right. He took his chances just like the rest of us. The only thing is, he got a bullet. Could have been any one of us. That's not what I mean. Just what do you mean, little Joe? I guess I don't even know myself, Bob. Supper will be ready pretty soon, boy. I'm not hungry, Pa. It was just one tree, Mr. Bishop. Starting a fight over one miserable tree. It's my land, court order or not, and I'll never give it up. Yeah. You've got just as much right to that timber as the Cartwrights have. And you sure could use the money. Winter coming on, feed to buy. What you got in mind, Jesse? Well, if I was you, Luther, I'd take Jason Carter up on that offer of his to buy that timber. There are other ways to get money without dealing with a man like Jason Carter. Who cares what kind of a man he is, as long as his money's good? You'd like to see blood run again on the Truckee Strip, wouldn't you? No, no. You I... can't forget your brother was killed fighting over it. He was killed fighting for you, Mr. Bishop. I haven't forgotten that. Well, I hope you never do. Amy. Yes, Paul? It's past midnight. You ought to be asleep. I couldn't sleep, Paul. A new one? Came all the way from New York. Amy, isn't there anything you like to do, or besides reading, I mean? There isn't much else to do around here, Pa. You're beautiful, Amy, like your Ma was. You came to us late in life. Your Ma didn't have a chance to enjoy you, or the concho. And she knew I was building it for her. Now that she's gone, it's for you, Amy. Is the Truckee Strip really our land? Why do you ask that? I was just wondering. Yes, it's our land. Just because a tired judge awarded to the Ponderosa doesn't change it. Why has there been so much fighting over one little piece of land? Well, maybe it's the timber. More likely, it's the, it's the principle. But I'll keep on fighting Ben Cartwright for it until the day I die. Uh, Jessup tells me that he saw you coming back from the creek today. I don't like him much, Pa. The way he keeps following me all over. He's a good foreman. I told him to keep an eye on you. Don't worry so much about me, Pa. Well, I'm going to Virginia City in the morning. Anything special I can get for you? I don't think so, Pa. Sleep well, child. Good night. Good night. Go 
Wilson, get over to the bank. Tell them I don't want Luther Bishop borrowing any more money. And hurry it up. Hey, you didn't see a little white-faced bull calf come running through here, did you? Oh. <laughs> Maybe he got hungry and went on home, saved me all that trouble. Again, maybe he didn't. I, I better go up a little further and make sure. Do you have to go? No, at least not for a while. It's a pretty horse. He doesn't take just anybody. Neither do I. Why did you come here? Paul wouldn't like my seeing you. Oh, we don't have to inherit the hates of our families. We can't escape it. Sure we can. If we try hard enough. I don't know. There's been so much hate for so many years. Maybe last night for the first time, I, I questioned my pa about all this fighting over a piece of land. I did it because I met a little girl with, with bare feet and the biggest eyes I ever saw. I thought about yesterday, too. About me? I'm glad. I'd hate to think I was the only one that felt that way. Come in. Well, Luther, come in. Sit down, sit down. I haven't got much time, Carter. That's all right. Would you uh, care to have some brandy with me? No, thank you. What do you want to see me about, Carter? You considered my offer? Yes, I considered it. The answer's still the same. No. I take it you don't need the money. You know very well I need the money. That's why you told the bank to refuse my loan. Oh, Luther, how could you think such a thing? Just by taking one good, long look at you. Now, you're a fool, Luther Bishop. I've offered to make you a rich man. All I get for it is insults. If you strip the land of trees, of beauty, of valuable watershed, all you got left is barren ground. Now, I'm interested in timber and not philosophy, Bishop. I'll keep the offer open. Don't bother. I won't be taking you up on it. Sometimes a need for money can make a man change his mind. tree-cutting stun of yours was supposed to win Luther Bishop over to our side. Well, I thought it would. I'm tired of playing games, Jessup. I need six million board feet of lumber, and I need it right now. Well, maybe I just didn't make my play strong enough. You give me a couple of boys that can keep their mouths shut. I'll get that timber for you, if I know Luther Bishop. Hired guns are a dime a dozen in this town. You get your own. You don't seem to want to help very much for a man that needs timber as bad as you. I don't want to be any part of your schemes, Jessup. All I'm interested in is getting that timber, and I'm willing to pay you a good bonus for doing it. How you go about it doesn't interest me in the least. I just don't want to get involved. <laughs> you already are involved, Mr. Carter. Grab any three of them. Now be quiet. Cartwright's hear us, will be on us like a pack of hounds. Well, Joe, you keep on missing supper like that, and you're going to get plum puny. You mean like you? I am getting kind of skinny. You got something you want to say? 
Yeah, little Joe, I, I've been thinking. Something's been bothering you the last couple of days. Can't I help? No, thanks, Horst. I don't think so. It's been worrying Paul, too. Yeah, has it? Sometimes it, it helps to talk things out, little Joe. Sometimes. Well, I always found Paul downright helpful when I went to him with something. Well, you never went to him with anything like this. Well, you think it over real careful. Sometimes when everything's said and done, it hurts a whole lot worse to keep it all pent up inside. Boss? Everything will be all right. Let's go. Come on, are you ready? What you coming for? We ain't got no money. We ain't after no money. We're just out joyriding. Your friend got a little nervous. Made a play for his gun. <laughs> You fool! That's just so you don't get no ideas of your own when we ride out of here. Did you recognize any of the men? No, sir. They wore handkerchiefs over their faces. But I did recognize a brand on a horse one of them was riding. It's no mistake in the Ponderosa brand, sir. Ponderosa. Are you sure you were on Concho land when it happened? Oh, yes, sir. By a long ways, Mr. Bishop. We just heard what happened. Can we get some of the boys together? I'm afraid it's too late for that. They'll be up in the hills by now. Go get yourself fixed up. Are you just going to sit still and let the Cartwrights get away with this? No, Pete. Ben Cartwright's gone too far this time. I want you to ride to Virginia City. Tell Jason Carter I've changed my mind. I'll accept his offer. Get his men out here the first thing in the morning. We'll cut down those trees, all right. I just hope Ben Cartwright tries to stop me. Well, last night, and they're running loose out there in the pasture. Well, what'd you leave the gate open for? Well, I didn't. That's the funny part about it. That gate's shut tight, and it's been shut tight. What is it, Trump? They've set up a lumber camp down on the strip. They're sawing timber like mad. I warned them about that. Warn them? The only warning Bishop knows is killing. We'd better get over there. Where's little Joe? I don't know, Bo. He said something about going out after strays. Seems to me there are more strays than usual running off. Be right with you, Tom. Sometimes too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed. And every fair from fair sometimes declines, by chance of nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not... Little Joe, you didn't hear a word I read. Oh, yes, I did. All right, what was the sonnet about? Well, now I can't speak real fancy like Shakespeare. And I don't agree with him. Why not? Well, first of all, I can't compare you to a summer's day. Because you're more like a day in spring. Now, I could talk real fancy, and I could say that your eyes are like stars. And I could say that your mouth is like a rose. When I look at you, I just can't think of anything to say.
You don't have to tell him. Could never be. Cartwright and a bishop? Oh, yes, it can. Now, look, if our folks... If our folks don't let us get together... Will you run away and marry me? Do you really want to marry me, little Joe? I want you for the rest of my life. I don't know, Mr. Cartwright. I, I ain't seen him this morning. I said, where is Luther Bishop? Honest, Mr. Cartwright, he ain't come up yet today. He's probably still down at the house. All right, come on. We'll settle this thing right now. <laughs> Dead. Trump is. He's like an animal. Trump, I can't forgive you for what you've done here. Now get on your horse. <laughs> Trump killed him before we could stop him. Nobody wanted this to happen. I don't reckon that's gonna bring the little boy's life back, though. Well, I don't guess it will. The boy's father does the laundry and cooking on the concho. I thought you didn't want any more killing. Now, this wasn't Pa's fault. Wasn't it? Trump worked for us. He was all sick inside over fighting over that piece of land. All right, Pa, you go on. You start killing all over again. Don't talk like that, little Joe. I'm not as good at guessing anymore. What's staring at you? I don't think you'd even understand. You gonna do anything about this? I'll take Trump back to Virginia City, turn him over to the sheriff. You don't even understand what I mean, do you? None of you. All you care about is there's been a killing and somebody has to pay for that killing. Taking him back to his park.
I can't let you, little Joe. I won't let you do it. I'm taking this boy back home. You mind what I say, Joe? I'm going, Pa. I just can't let you. No, no, you just try and stop me. Put your gun down, Joe. Well, I'm sorry, but I gotta take this boy back. You just tell me why. That's all I ask. I guess this killing rubs off on all of us. I'm holding a gun on my own father. It's all right, Joe. I just can't tell you, Bob, not now. All right. Go ahead, do, do what you think you have to. But Paul. Let him go. You'll shoot him before he can explain. I said, let him go. Something's troubling him. We just dare and interfere. He'll never forgive us if we do. We could trail him. No, no, that won't do any good. Us, we gotta stop treating him like a boy. He's asking for our trust. Something's eating away at him deep down inside. Something he'll have to figure out in his own good time. Concho can get you killed, boy. I know that. What happened to him? I'm not going to lie to you, Mr. Bishop. It was one of our men. But it wasn't Pa's doing. The man that did it's been taken to Virginia City and turned over to the sheriff. Your father sent you here to tell me that? Pa's sorry about the boy. So Ben Cartwright thinks that squares things, huh? The boy is killed and your Pa says he's sorry. Well, you tell him something for me, boy. It don't square things, not with me, it don't. The man that killed him was Willard Trump. I think you remember Trump, Mr. Bishop. You should remember him. You shot him in the face. He hasn't been the same since then. Go get Lo Chow. Tell him come get his son. I've still got a score to settle with Ben Cartwright. Red Holt, one of my fence riders, was shot down in cold blood on Concho land. It wasn't anybody from the Ponderosa. You're lying. No, I'm not, Mr. Bishop. If Pi had anything to do with that, he'd own up to it, not try to hide it. You know that. They were riding horses with a Ponderosa brand. Why was he killed? I don't know. He was a good boy, my only son. I'll help you bury him. No. A man buries his son by himself.
Next time I won't miss Cartwright. You can have that next time right now. You set foot on this land again and you're as good as dead. Who are you to tell me that? My brother was killed on that strip by Ponderosa men. You remember. Yeah, I remember your brother. He was killed in a fair fight. And Red? And China Boy? I'm going to get all you Cartwrights if I have to get you one at a time. And you, Sonny, you stay away from Amy, or I'll kill you right in front of her eyes. Well, you go near Amy, and you're going to have that chance to kill me. You talk like a man. Let's see if you can shoot that. Like Little Joe! Jessup, haven't you got work to do? Who seem to know each other. We do, Paul. Get on inside. Paul, please. Get in the house, Amy. I ought to kill you, boy, right here and now. But I'm not going to for one reason. You had the grit to bring Soon's body back home. I'm going to give you a chance to ride out of here. But if I ever see you on Concho land again, you're going to be cut down quick. Now ride. It's going to be a lot more difficult to break up Amy and I than that, Mr. Bishop. soon, Pa. Little Joe can take care of himself, Pa. Something's happened to him. Don't talk like that, Pa. I, I, uh, think I'd like to talk to him alone. I understand, Pa. Come on, Hoss. Pa, you know, you know he don't mean half what he said. Come on, Hoss. See, you're all right, boy. I'm all right, Pa. But, Pa, I... Uh... Seem to have any trouble talking before. No. No, never had. It's funny, you know. It seems to get harder to talk when you're when you're not a kid anymore. It means a lot to you, doesn't it, Pa? All that land out there. Yes, it means a lot to me. But it's not my whole life. Are you sure? What was it that you couldn't tell me? Well, that day when we ran those, those men off the strip, hmm? 
I went, I went down by the creek bed by myself to look around. And I met a girl. Oh. Her name is Amy. Amy Bishop. You know, it's funny. She... Well, she's been around all this time, and I... All she ever meant to me was a name. Part of the family we're supposed to stay away from. Now I love her, Pa. That's why you couldn't tell me. I want to marry her. I know what you're thinking, and I... I'm sorry, I should have told you before, but I know how you feel about Luke. We're so far apart, boy. I've never held my land above my sons. Before that had happened, I'd destroy the Ponderosa. I guess we won't have any trouble talking anymore, Pop. Well, what does, uh, <clears throat> what does Luther Bishop think about all this? I wish he felt about it like you do. One of his fence riders was killed. He says that the men that did it were riding horses with a Ponderosa brand. I told him it wasn't any of our men. Hmm. Well, I guess we, uh, guess we have quite a bit to talk over with Luther Bishop. I was wondering how long it'd take you to finally get up here, Ben. Luther, there's something I wanted to say to you. I thought you'd send a boy to do your talking for you. Now, Bishop, those men that killed your fence rider, they were riding my horses all right, but those horses were stolen from the Ponderosa. You're lying, Ben Cartwright. Now, what reason would I have to lie to you? Haven't I always fought you out in the open? Yes, you always have in the past. This time, I think there's some other reason behind it. What other reason might you be referring to? Your boy and my Amy. Now, I got nothing against your boy, Ben. But Amy's young, and I don't believe she's a... Luther, now I let my boy make up his own mind. Why don't you do the same with your Amy? All right. But you'll see Amy don't want to leave me. Well, shouldn't we ask her? All right. Little Joe? Boys, you go fetch her. She at the house? Yes. What do you want? I just got back from the lumber camp. Looks like feud started all over again. Like your paw says, looks like blood's going to be running the strip all over again. Why are you telling me this? I thought you'd like to know. Your boy ain't ever gonna let you and that Cartwright boy get together. He will. When he gets to know little Joe. Looks like he ain't ever gonna have that chance. What do you mean? Oh, Amy. Waited a long time for you to grow up. I ain't gonna let some Cartwright boy come in here and take you away from me. <laughs> Don't touch me. Ain't I good enough for you, Amy? Get away from me. Oh, don't be afraid, honey. I don't want to hurt you. You ever been kissed by a man? <laughs> <laughs> Amy! Amy! 
wouldn't shoot an unarmed man, now, would you, Sonny? Did everything I could for her. She wants to see you, little Joe. chance because the fighting's all over I'm glad little Joe and uh Pa said he'd uh Pa said he'd give us that, that little piece of land down by the creek you can stick your feet in that old water anytime you want to it's so beautiful down there little Joe have a house back by the tree.
She said it could never be. A Cartwright and a bishop. My friends, we ran out of grub and water. Wonder if we could get a few supplies. There's a town five miles back the way you came. Why didn't you stock up there? Well, we didn't go through town, ma'am. We went around. That's right. We're on the run. Oh, now don't scare the lady, Marks. It's like he says, ma'am, only uh, we ain't real bad. It's just that town got kind of sick of us and... Uh... What do you want? Some grub, water. A couple of baits of grain for the horses. You'll find grain in the barn. I'll fix some food for you. No! Don't come in the house. Fine-looking woman, Kirk. Don't you pay no mind to the woman. Let's just load up. Load up and get. Why don't you and Kirk take the horses down the lake, water them? I'll be right along. Mind that you are. Yes, sir. Uh, real fine looking woman. She's dead. You forget crime means hanging. I'm riding out and you better come along. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. We didn't do anything. No. No, we never done nothing. And you tell them that when they put a rope around your neck. Hey, Adam. Only two bits, will you? What for? I want to get me some of that sweetener. I don't want any of that truck. What's the matter with that truck? Hey, Paul. Not now, Hoss. But, Paul, I... Not now, Hoss. Hey, little Joe, I left all my money in my other pants. Let me have two bits, will you? Hey, what for? Well, I'm only getting some of that sweetening. Sweetening? You're gonna get fat you start eating that stuff. All two bits worth of it ain't gonna make me fat. The heck it won't. You found your horse. You'll break him right down the middle you load up on that kind of stuff. I ain't gonna break my horse down. I ain't gonna find no horse. Give me two bits. Don't blame me if you get in trouble. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Jack. Hey, Jack. Now, give me about a dime worth of jelly bean. Right. Better give me about a dime worth of them red hots. All in the same sack? Yeah, just put it all over there again. Give me about a nickel's worth of them molasses over there. Them molasses is good for you, Tony. You're gonna need one. <laughs> Little Joe, you. 
you get yourself a haircut while you're in town? Oh, I just got one a couple months ago, Pa. More like three months ago. Just get your hair cut. Here, Pa. Go ahead, take it. What'd you do that for? I don't want to found on my horse. Did you going with us? No, he's staying in town to get himself a haircut. Now, Pa? Right now. I don't want any son of mine going around looking like a cheap riverboat gambler. Now, you got to cut real short, do you hear? Adam, you see to it. Oh, oh. There ain't a proper barber in this town. They're all a bunch of engines. <laughs> They're going to really scalp me. So he scalps you. Adam. Whoa. What's the matter? My wife. Fanny? How'd it happen? Three men did it. Prospector down by the creek saw him leave. Joe, get the sheriff. Yeah. Boys inside are talking posse. Johnson's gone to see about burying his wife. He sent his boy to find Piled Scroggs. Guess Paiute's about the best tractor we got around here. Paiute Scroggs is a gusty old windbag. Who's heading the posse? Guess I am. Don't want to, but I'm not the sheriff. The sheriff's out of town, so I guess it's up to me. Adam, why don't you and your brother come along? No, manhunting's not our kind of work. Well, I know that, but the Cartwrights have always been real friendly with the Johnsons. Maybe you can talk some sense into it. You don't think if they find them three fellas, they're going to bring them in alive, do you? Well, now, it's your job to see that they do. Well, I can't. Not alone. Help me, will you? All right, get the horses. <laughs> then you're going? Yeah, I hate to see Flynn Johnson do something he'd be sorry for later on. Come with us, Adam? Yeah. Good. Well, Pio thinks we ought to pick up their tracks down by the creek where the prospectors saw them. Aren't you sure these are men you want? What do you mean? Well, just because a prospector saw them near your place doesn't mean that they're the men that killed Vanny. They're the ones. You about ready? As soon as they're wet, my dry. All right. We'll be leaving right away. What will happen to them three fellows when we catch up with them? Sure, man. You mean you don't know what'll happen? Well, I'm asking, ain't I? I guess we'll kill them. Doggone. I ain't never killed nobody before. Nah, me neither. Well, I guess it has to be a first time. Yeah, I guess. Say, uh, my name's Timmons. Most folks call me Buck. Charlie Buford. My friends call me Blue. Howdy, Blue. Howdy, Buck. Looks like they're heading for the ridge up yonder. Well, let's get after them.
off here. They're heading for the dry lands. I got to shine the mosey on down to McSween's Roadhouse. We can water and bait up there. We're not going to waste time in that hog ranch. You're already six hours ahead of us and riding hard. Listen, Mr. Johnson. I led more posses and hung more men than you can count on both hands. Let me tell you about them fellas. They're running. They know we're after them. They're pushing hard. They're wearing their horses out. They're wearing themselves out. We'll just take it easy, and we'll catch up with them in plenty of time. Adam, what do you think? I don't like it. The longer we keep these men on the trail, the harder it's going to be to handle them when we catch up with what we're after. If they get whiskey at McSween's, it's going to be worse. Maybe Paiute's right. I think we'll lay over a little while at McSween's. Seems like me and you are thinking alike. Um, it's going to be hard to bring them men back alive. All right, lead up. <laughs> Keep moving! You're gonna kill the horses if you keep running them like this. Look, I'd rather kill the horses than me. Now, let's go! Now, wait a minute, Blackie. The kid's right. We get set afoot this part of the country, we're all finished. And besides, uh, there ain't nobody chasing us yet. Don't fool yourself, Schuster. They're behind us, all right. I told you we should have killed that prospector. I'm sick of killing. I'm getting pretty sick of you, too. I got a good notion to turn around and go back. All right, go back. See what it gets you. A rope around the neck, that's what. You think those fellows are going to take us back? Listen, I've ridden on a few posses in my time. They get all lick it up. And after a while, when they catch up with whoever they're chasing, they're snake mean and ready for hanging. I know. I've been there. He's right, kid. Come on, now, let's go! Hey, you think the Palmer brothers. They killed a storekeeper out in the California diggings. I led that posse just like I'm leading this. Took us four days just logging, jogging along before we finally caught up with them. Time we did, everybody was so hot and saddle galled and sick and tired of the whole business, just hung them right on the spot. How does it feel to hang a man, Pai? Oh, it feels prime. You feel all dreamed out, good and lazy. You'll find out. When we catch them three up ahead, huh, Pai? You tell them, young'un. Hanging's too good for them. When I think of that poor Mrs. Johnson, like I always say, men ain't nothing but dirty brutes. Well, ain't they? Well, yes, ma'am, I, I guess so. You boys got mothers, ain't you? Well, yes, ma'am. Where would a man be without his mother? That's what I want to know. Where? I don't know, ma'am. Mother's is the Lord's sweetest gift on this earth. That's why. And mother's is women, too. Don't you forget it. No, ma'am. You just remember that the next time you go around beating up on women. Well, we ain't beat up on no women yet, ma'am. Leastways, I ain't. Well, me neither. Well, I wouldn't think of doing such a thing. Ah, oh, no. You are good boys, ain't you? I declare, I wouldn't mind being your mom myself. Yes, ma'am. Come on, Lil, let's have another drink. Okay, I... <laughs> uh, I kind of wish I hadn't come on this picnic. Wonder if Pai was right, that the way you feel when you hang a man. I guess we're going to find out. Yeah. What's wrong? Let's get going. Now we out of the 
I don't know. I just listen to that lynch talk in there. I don't know what makes men act like that. Yeah, they can get mean pretty quick sometimes. The look at their drinking doesn't help any. Sometimes it's a pretty sorry thing to be a man. What do you think we stand? I don't know. I think Flint's got a lot of poison building up in him. When we catch those three men, it won't take much to turn this into a lynching party. That Paiute Scroggs is sure working him up for hanging. Uh, yeah. yeah, here's to you. <laughs> Hope I have another meeting. <laughs> Tell you, Pot ain't right going on like this. You're gonna stop it, Pot, and get these men out of here. We'll get them out when I think they're ready. Ready for what, Pot? Ready to take care of your mild murderers the way they ought to be taken care of. Standing. You are in charge of this posse. Why, sure I am. You know that. I don't know any such thing. You've been hanging back and letting Paiute Scroggs and Flint Johnson take over. Paiute's had a lot of experience in this kind of thing. Paiute's had a lot of experience leading lynch mobs. Well, what do you want me to do? I want you to take charge of the posse. I think they're going to let Jeb take over. Well, I might as well let him know where we stand before we go any farther. You now, you Cartwrights don't like the way things are being run. You can pack out. We don't like the way things are being run, but we won't pack out. This is a lawful posse. Yeah, and we're going along to make sure it stays that way. You're trying to pack a lot of weight. We're used to packing a lot of weight. Yeah, well, you're not the Lord Almighty. Any man can go under. Well, you put me under, Paiute. Now, he's off, boys. Adam, we've been friends for a long time. Don't spoil it. Don't push me too hard. I won't push you now or any other time, Flint. But I won't back off, either. Now, Jeb, I want you to take charge of the posse. You want me to try him, Flint? Yeah, you try him. Hey, you got a long life of sin and wickedness ahead of you, Paiute, if you take care of yourself. Right now, you're being just plain foolish. I won't fight both of you. Now. All right, boys. Have it your way. Clanton, you take charge. Spell won't be for long. Probably got somebody reading our sign right now. Have a, a drink of water, Blackie. Get your dirty fingers off that water bag. I've never seen a man go through water like you. 
First you drink yours, now you're trying to drink mine. I can't help it if I get thirstier than most blackie. It's, it's a condition. The doctor back in Virginia City told me. Said I got a real bad condition. Well, you can wait for water till we get to Pinell Springs. Pinell Springs? Blackie, that, that's ten miles away. I, I can't. Then suck on a pebble. Think about water till we get there. You. Where are you going? I just quit running, Blackie. Are you out of your mind or something? I was, but I ain't anymore. I must have been out of my mind to start running from something I didn't do. What are you gonna do? Just sit here and wait for him? Maybe. Maybe I'll ride back, meet him. Maybe they'll listen to me when I tell them I had nothing to do with killing that woman. And maybe they'll hang you first. Be ready to listen when you're dead. I'm tired of running. Then you must be tired of living. I don't kill as easy as that woman, Blackie. You going with him or you want to stay? Blackie's right. I, I don't aim to try my luck with that posse. Both of you on your horses. Right out. is suffering. I'm suffering along with you. I'm just as tired and dirty and saddled gold as the rest of them. Smell just as bad and maybe a little bit worse. What makes me suffer more is thinking that maybe it's all for nothing. Don't you think we're going to catch him, Piot? Sure, we'll catch up with him. But what comes after it makes you sick at your stomach. What comes after, Paiute? Oh, they turn him over to the deputy and take him right back to Virginia City for trial. And you got to have a judge for trial. Circuit judge won't be around for four or five months. Man, don't them fellas have a time waiting for that trial. All them women coming in there bringing them pie and cake and white bread and all that stuff. All you fellas don't have but once a year, and maybe that's at Christmas. And them preachers, man, well, they shine. They'll be praying and exhorting all over the place, and them town women will come down there, and they'll be singing hymns, telling them all about their moles and their sisters. <laughs> about two days before the trial, they'll be converted. I tell you, it'll take more than a jury to convict them after a thing like that. You mean they'll let him go? Bless you, boy. Them murdering devils would have killed half the women in the territory and scalped them to boot. Nobody's said nothing about it, because people forget to get mad enough to hang people proper. Of course, oh, uh, with Debbie Clinton here and uh, three or four others I don't care to mention, we can't... Well, we're just not allowed to do that. Out of here. Are you crying for your mom? Can't a man cry without somebody poking at him all the time? Yeah, sure he can. It's just that sometimes it helps to talk about it. You know, I can't talk to you. You and your brother are against Pa and me. No, we're not against you, Billy. 
We're just going along to make sure everything is done right. Will you tell me, is it right to let free the men that killed my ma? Look, nobody's going to let those men go free. Yeah, well, that ain't what Paiute says. Well, Paiute's a liar. Look, we're just going along to make sure those men are punished according to the law. Well, that ain't enough. Look. Look, it's my ma that's dead. And it's Pa and me, the ones that's going to fix them that killed her. And you ain't going to stop us, little Joe. Because if you do, somebody's going to get killed. Please, go away. Go. <laughs> What's wrong? Uh, nothing exactly. I just wanted to talk to you. And I'm bone tired. Let me sleep, will you? Adam, this is important. <laughs> all right, what is it? Where's all this going to lead us? What do you mean? Suppose we catch up with those men. Suppose Flint Johnson wants to hang him then and there. What do we do? Fight. We fight against Flint and his boy that have been friends and neighbors for years? If necessary. Oh, well, I just don't think it's necessary. All right, I'm listening. Fanny Johnson was a good woman. The men that killed her were rotten. Now, I just can't see going up in a gunfight against friends to save men like that. How do you know the three men we're chasing are the ones that killed Vanny? Everybody knows that. Nobody knows anything. Vanny Johnson was killed. Three men were seen riding away from the Johnson place. Now, that doesn't prove they were the ones that killed her. Look, what if we knew they were guilty? Suppose we knew for sure that they were the men that did it. Nobody knows anything for sure. You get some rest. You get a hard day. What's it look like, Pilot? Well, it looks like they're mixed in with a bunch of wild mustangs. Can't make out them tracks. What do you figure we ought to do now? Well, we ought to split up. Some of them take the draws and some of them the ridges. Can you see the signs of the tracks of a shod horse let out a hoop or shoot a gun? Well, that makes sense. All right, you men, split up and do like Piute says. Hey, you better come along with me, Piute. I ain't such a good tracker. Here, Pa. Here, here's what they turned off. It's a shot horse track if I ever saw one. Wait, I was just going to signal the others. Shoot! All right, come on. But drop your gun first. Ah! <laughs> oh, he was giving up. He was coming in to surrender. He was going for his gun. He's only a kid. He ain't much older than me. Yeah. He won't get any older. We came up on him. He went for his gun. I had to kill him. That's what I'm going to tell him. You're going to back me up. He's one of the men who killed your ma. Like you say, Pa. He went for his gun. All 
right, that's enough. You're wasting time. The man deserves a decent burial. I said that's enough. Why'd you kill the boy, Flint? He started to make a fight of it. I think he was coming in to give himself up. I think you shot him deliberately. I still say you court rights don't swing much weight around here. All right, we're leaving the posse. But we won't be responsible for anything you do. Come on, let's mount up. You and Horse hunted this country, didn't you? Yeah, what about it? Where's the nearest water from here? Well, where we watered last night. No, I mean the direction those other two are heading. I thought we were going home. No, not yet. I'm going to try to reach those other men before the posse gets to them. Judging from this man's canteen, they should be pretty low on water. Yeah, well, that'd be, uh... That'd be Pinnell Springs. That's about 11, 12 miles from here. Is there a shortcut? Yeah, over the ridges and through some lava country. It's pretty rough on the horses. We'll give it a try. We'll rest up here a while. what I ever drank, well, the best tasting, but it sure is wet. Just a little, Blackie. I always figured you were a selfish old man, Schuster. First you drink your own water, and now you want to drink all mine. Just wet the lips. Now, no, no, I told you, hey, no. Blackie, you, you're the meanest man I ever did know. You worse than a hydrophobic skunk. You ain't fit to live. <laughs> You getting any ideas, just? I never meant it that way. Well, I think I better take your gun. <laughs> no, just... Now you ride on up ahead. I can't. I can't go on without no water. My condition. You move on or well, your condition is going to be dead. That's where they spell the horses. Them tracks pretty fresh. They'll be needing water. The nearest is Pinnell Springs. How far? Oh, about 10 miles, the easy way through the coolies and draws. About half that distance across the ridges. That's too rough to ride. Uh, we'll take the short route. Well, you're the boss. There's your nice, cool water. 
one's for you. Now drop your gun. I right, come and get me if you can. Hold it. I gotta have water. Hey, you'll be dead before you reach it. Get in there. Are you coming out or do we have to shoot you out? What have I got to lose staying here? A few more months of living. You come out now and I promise you a fair trial. That's big talk with a hanging posse right behind you, mister. Who are you? I'm Adam Cartwright and there's no posse. Just me and my brother. Do like he says, Mikey. Listen, it'll be my neck. It'll go into that noose, not yours. No deal, Cartwright. Come and get me. So I hit on down behind them rocks. Cover you from there. Kill that woman, he did. I, I gotta have it. I gotta have a drink of water. I got a condition, a bad condition. All right, get it. That third man. You can't have him, Flint. I don't believe you'd fire on a friend to protect a murderer. I'm getting him. You make one more move and I'll blow you right out of the saddle. What are you trying to do? This man's my prisoner. I'm riding him into jail and I'll fight any man who tries to stop me. Jeb Clanton is the authority here. Jeb Clanton hasn't got the courage or the will to protect this prisoner. We'll be riding out at dusk. You'll never make it. Where do you stand, Jeb? Well, I'm asking you to turn over the prisoner, like Flint said. Schuhoffer? Well, I'm for law and order, but I ain't taking up gunplay against my friends and neighbors just to protect that killer. I'm quitting and riding out. Good luck. I heard your speech. It sounded real good. You think you can back your brag? There was no brag. <laughs> it's so funny. I think it's funny. <laughs> Kid brother tells me they killed the boy back on the trail, right? So? And Schuster. Schuster got it right outside, going after that water he was always yamming about. <laughs> you know, I told him. I told him that thirst was going to kill him. And it surely did. <laughs> I'm waiting for the joke. The joke? Both of them dead, who didn't do nothing. And me, I'm alive. And I'd done the killing. <laughs> they wasn't even there. Just me. I'm alive. And you. 
You're gonna keep me this way. <laughs> I think that's funny. Yeah, I'm gonna keep you alive. <laughs> See you hang. Legal. Are we fixing to sit around here all day? You said they were taking off at dusk. I say we go in and get them. Them cart rats won't dare open up on us. You don't know much about the cart rats, do you? I ain't afraid of any cart rat that ever walked. All right, Paiute. You go on in. We'll follow. Well, now, uh, maybe we don't see eye to eye about this. Uh, I ain't bloodthirsty. Um, I'd hate to see them two misguided boys get hurt. You gonna watch me hang, you Cartwrights, huh? You ain't gonna watch nobody hang, you hear? Don't you think I got friends? Oh, I got lots of friends. I've been in lots of trouble for this. I always get out of it. You know why? No witnesses, Cartwrights. No witnesses. They had to let me go. I just got enough out of you. <laughs> and no, you ain't. I got my rights, Codrad. I can talk. I can talk as much as I want. So Trody saying about maybe going free? I don't know. It's up to a jury. If he's found guilty, he'll hang, won't he? Yep. And we know he's guilty, don't we? Just what are you getting around to? I was just thinking how much easier it would be if we just gave him to those men out there. But we can't do that. Yeah, I know. A man can wish, can he? Cartwright! Cartwright! What is it, Flint? Let's call it off. You can take the prisoner into town. We'll come along just to see he doesn't escape. How do I know you'll stand by that agreement? Well, I'll give you my word and hand on it. Jeb Clanton backs me up. That's right, Adam. Shake hands with Flint. Save us all a lot of trouble. Well, before I come out and take your hand, I think you ought to know something, Flint. The two men you killed were innocent. They had nothing to do with killing your wife. How do you know that? A man in here's the killer. He admits it. The other two had nothing to do with the murder. Now, you'll have to face a hearing on those killings. I'll make sure of it when we get back to town. I'll stick to my word. Hey, look out, look out! Get over here. All right, get inside. Now, like my brother said, we're taking that man back at dusk. Don't try to stop us. Any time now. 
Where do you think you're going? I've had enough. I'm pulling out. Me too. They lost the edge, Flint. You can't hold them. I think I'll mosey along. You too? Mr. Johnson, I'm an old man. I wouldn't be no use in a shooting match of them crazy Cartwrights. I'll see you around, maybe. I think it's all over. Hey, you're a couple of good boys. If you'd known my wife, you know what kind of a woman she was. Well, you think I'm right, don't you? Well, I guess so, Mr. Johnson. You'll stick with me? Yes, sir. I guess we just about have to, don't we, Buck? Yeah, I guess so. As you see, Billy, we got a couple of friends. We're gonna get the man who killed your ma. It's like we planned to. We're gonna get him, we're gonna kill him. Son. Wait. I guess I had enough to kill him, Pop. Seeing two innocent men killed. That was enough for me. Now, they're waiting out there for us. Uh, you should have known sooner or later there'd be a day like this. Let's go. Uh, here he is, Flint. Take a good look at him. There's your boy. Never mind him. I want that man. You'll have to kill us to get him. There's been enough talk. Get mounted. Where's your son, Mr. Johnson? I said leave Billy out of this. Why'd he ride out on you, Flint? If boy had any feeling for his pa, he'd stand with him at a time like this. Why'd he leave you? Maybe he got sick of looking at a man that led a lynch mob, huh? All right, Cartwright. This is the end of any friendship between us. Two men dead? Friendship's broken. A man parted from his son. I hope you boys remember that. Look, don't blame us, mister. We just came along to see the fun. Well, you've seen it. <laughs> 